Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Elegoo Mars SLA 3D printer. I ordered this printer a few weeks ago, and I've never owned an SLA printer before, so this has been somewhat of a learning experience for me. Because of the price, a lot of people have been making review videos and unboxing videos on this printer recently, and for the most part, I've avoided them because I wanted to form my own opinion. I know in the past I've received a couple of 3D printers to review for free, but this one I bought out of my own pocket, and nobody's paying me to make this review. Along with the printer, I also bought four bottles of different colored Elegoo resin to print with, which is worth mentioning if you buy this printer for the discounted price tag on Amazon, it doesn't come with any sample resin. For starters, the Elegoo came mostly assembled and very well packaged. The print surface was in its own separate piece of foam, but everything else came put together. As for everything that's included with the printer, there was a toolkit that came with the following. A US friendly power adapter, a nice looking 4GB USB drive to move sliced files from your computer to the printer, a little plastic measuring cup full of nitrile gloves, a hex key screwdriver, a plastic scraper for removing prints from the print surface, a pair of flush cutters, a white plastic 3D printed thing that I still have no idea what purpose it serves, a small stack of disposable wire mesh paint strainers, some allen wrenches and spare screws, and a couple cheap disposable face masks. There's also a small instruction manual that I highly recommend reading before you try slicing and printing your own models. The USB drive comes with the Chi2Box slicing software which, for a free slicing software that came with a $250 printer, feels very well put together. But uh, if you do like I did and ignore the rest of the instruction manual, you might end up with less than ideal print results. Anyway, after I figured that out, I've had much better luck getting good prints. The software does have some pretty nice features though, like the option to hollow out models and create portholes to drain out any leftover resin from your hollow print. Also you can manually add or remove SLA friendly supports easier than any other slicing software I've used. And surprisingly, I've never had it crash on me once. As somebody who's been dealing with the layer lines, overhangs, and limited capabilities of FDM 3D printers for the last couple of years, it's hard not to be blown away by the print quality from this printer. I have had some less than stellar results, mostly due to my own mistakes in slicing, but the successful prints put anything else I've ever printed to shame. By default, the layer height in the Cheetah Box software is 0.05mm, which is about half the thickness of a piece of paper and a quarter as high as what most FDM printers are adept at printing. In addition to that, the layers created by curing resin are different than layers made by layering melted plastic with an FDM printer nozzle. Melting plastic leaves miniature rounded edges overlapping on top of each other, and if you want a perfectly smooth outside edge, you would need to sand off all those rounded edges. However, for SLA, the UV light evenly cures an entire layer of resin into plastic at a time, creating a solid even layer of plastic with flat edges on top of the last layer of plastic. That means nice smooth edges and prints that look more like they were injection molded than 3D printed. While I don't think this is really specific to the Elegoo Mars, supports are a big thing to take into consideration when slicing models for this printer. I'm no expert on the subject by any means, but from what I've seen, the vast majority of models sliced for this printer need to be raised up off the bed with supports for best results and any flat surfaces like the base on this Deadpool model are better off if they're tilted at a slight angle. The reason is, for all three Elegoo resins I've tried so far, the resulting plastic is pretty hard and thin pieces of it break if they're bent. The plastic scraper that comes with the printer isn't particularly sharp and it has to be pretty thick to be durable enough not to break when removing prints. So if you try removing something stuck directly to the print surface like, oh I don't know, this nine-tailed, uh, six-tailed demon fox, odds are you're going to break part of the print. You might be thinking, why not just use a thin metal scraper? But you really don't want to scratch up the print surface since that could make things less likely to stick to it, or worse, end up scratching or tearing the plastic film at the bottom of your resin tray. The supports are a nice compromise because the slicing software makes a raft at the bottom of the print with a raised edge that you can slide the scraper under, making removing prints way easier. Also, if you end up breaking the supports when you're hacking away at it with a scraper, no big deal, as long as your print survives. The only real downfall is they tend to leave little pockmarked scars on the surface of your print. I have read that wet sanding is a good way to clean those up, but I haven't spent much time on post-processing anything just yet. While this printer seems like it's all rainbows and puppies so far, there are some serious downsides of owning an SLA printer. 
For example, some of the resins smell incredibly toxic. They all have a pretty strong smell, but the transparent red specifically will kind of knock the wind out of you in some scenarios. I live in a small apartment by myself, and I won't leave the printer running without a window open. If you live with other people, small children, or pets, I would only recommend getting an SLA printer if you have a safe and well-ventilated area to print in. In addition to this, you should really wear nitrile gloves to protect your hands and some kind of ventilation to protect yourself from breathing in too many fumes, as well as eye protection. After seeing some other videos on SLA printers in the past, I generally assumed some of these warnings were kind of an exaggeration, but from my experience, these seem to be legitimate concerns. Printing with an SLA printer doesn't feel like the kind of thing you would want to do at home as a carefree or kid-friendly hobby. That's not to say all children are incapable of learning to properly handle an SLA printer, but I personally would feel more comfortable leaving a 10-year-old alone with an ANET A8 than I would with an SLA printer. Aside from health and safety concerns, there's also maintenance and the severe inconvenience of failed prints. For the most part, this printer does simplify as much of the process as can be expected, but imagine if every failed print on your FDM 3D printer resulted in your hot end being covered in melted plastic, and to clean it off, you have to put on gloves and a face mask. Also, you don't know if it failed until a few hours later. For the most part, as long as you know what you're doing with the slicing software, and assuming you're reasonably familiar with the resin you're using, you can fairly easily avoid this, but I've had prints fail at least once for every type of resin I've tried. A big part of printing on an SLA printer is cleanup, and that applies largely to the printed part itself. When your print is done and you go to remove it from the print surface, it's still going to be covered in uncured resin. As with everything on this printer, this requires gloves and proper safety gear to prevent from getting any resin on yourself. Fortunately, the resin cleans off the prints fairly easily with 91% isopropyl alcohol, which you can get for a couple of bucks at places like Walmart. I just filled up two larger Tupperware containers with alcohol and used one for the first cleaning and the other for final rinse. This seems to do a pretty good job of getting rid of any leftover resin and prepping for UV curing. This may not be necessary for every resin or every print, but generally speaking, after you've cleaned off your print and broken away any supports, you probably want to let it cure for a little while before you do anything else with it. I've heard some resins don't fully harden until you cure them, but most of the prints in all three resins I've tried have felt pretty solid after washing them off with alcohol. Just to be on the safe side, I have been curing mine by setting them on a windowsill in the sun for 30 to 45 minutes. I know they do sell some curing stations specifically for curing your prints that basically consist of a container full of mirrors and a UV light, but so far I haven't needed any prints so badly that I couldn't wait for some sunlight to do the job. This does bring up one interesting point though, apparently some resins stay very UV sensitive even after they've cured into a hard plastic. For example, after printing the Rook Test print that came on the USB drive in white Elegoo resin, I decided to set those prints in my windowsill for a few hours in direct sunlight to cure. You can look at the difference between those Rook models and this 2B model I printed and like here for about 20 minutes. The Rook is drastically yellower and on its way to a brown color. It also feels kind of unnaturally dried out as compared to something like PLA which has more of a glossier or water resistant texture after it's printed. I believe the recommendation is to apply some sort of UV protecting finish on your prints to prevent this from happening, but unfinished I don't believe they are very outdoor friendly. I haven't delved very far into trying functional prints on the Elegoo, and the UV sensitivity kind of eats away part of what my opinion of the word functional implies, but I did attempt to print some print in place guitar string winders from Thingiverse. Admittedly, this model is kind of a torture test in itself because it has very small gaps between the edges. However, if you look at the model in the slicing software, the gaps do look big enough to print separate without getting fused together. I've only tried this print once with the same settings I used on the Deadpool model, but it didn't work out for me. The string winders do look really nice, but they really don't work the way they're supposed to. So I'll have to do some more testing with print settings and other models before I make my mind up on this personally, but so far I am not sold. Being quiet is one place where this printer really excels in my opinion. There is one fan that isn't very loud, and when the printer is running, I can't hear it from the next room with the door wide open. I have to admit, I was worried for a minute when I first started playing with the printer, and it was beeping obnoxiously to indicate certain things, but Elegoo included an option in the menu to turn off the beeps, and that is a huge plus in my book. So what's my final verdict? Would I recommend buying this printer? As with most printers, I will have to say it really depends on your situation and needs. 
I would not recommend this printer for a small child who wants to learn how to 3D print. This is absolutely a more advanced manufacturing method that yields great results, but comes with some serious downsides. However, if you're looking for a printer for some highly detailed models or even some intricate work like prototyping jewelry and you happen to have a well-ventilated space away from pets and loved ones, this is a great printer for the price. I believe other SLA printers come with even higher pixel screens to print even higher resolution, but judging from my own tests, I'm having a hard time seeing how that would be necessary in most scenarios. The print volume isn't particularly large, which is kind of a bummer, but you can print some really cool stuff in the space that is there. Also, the printer feels really well made. The resin tray is solid and heavy, and the red acrylic cover is effective at keeping a lot of the fumes in and stray light out of the resin while it's printing. Anyway, this is my first foray into the world of SLA printing, so I'm sure there's some stuff that I missed and some stuff that I still need to learn to get the most out of this printer, but I am pretty happy with the purchase overall. Again, nobody sponsored this video, nobody sent me the printer to review, I've just wanted an SLA printer for a while, and I figured I would share my experience with you guys. I do want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel since my last video, and thank you to everybody who hasn't unsubscribed for sticking around, it really does mean a lot. I want to make videos for this channel more often, but it takes a lot of time and energy to put out some of these videos, not to mention supplies and materials are not free, so I apologize if I don't upload as regularly as some other YouTubers. I will, however, try my best not to wait another year before putting out the next video. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to click the like or subscribe button, and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time!